featured in Crip Camp. Uh, and I thought I'd ask her a question so you guys could hear from her. Uh, and that is uh, Judy Newman, whose uh, resume is too long to list. How are you, Judy? Good, Mr. President. How are you? I'm doing great. And and I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the line. And, and so if you don't mind, here's what I was thinking. I, you know, we're watching the movie and seeing you as, as this young kid. Although I have to say, you, you don't look much older. <laughs> and, uh, it's and, because I dye my hair. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, for decades, you, you, you've been on the front lines uh, of, of bringing about a, a more just and, and, and equal and, and accessible society. Uh, but you had to make a transition at some point and or at various points during your career where uh, you're, you're operating as an activist. And uh, initially, you know, you, you're young and you're on the front lines. And then uh, because of your talents and your passion, uh, you gain some notoriety and you become a spokesperson and a public figure. Uh, and then uh, because of the work that you do, uh, offers are made for you to transition into government uh, and you, you serve at a variety of levels uh, in, in some really important capacities. And I'm wondering when, you, uh, when you're talking to somebody like a Rosemary who's still sort of at the start of her career, uh, and I think this is relevant, you're hearing this come up among a lot of young people who are out there marching right now on behalf of uh, social justice issues. Uh, how do you uh, see the relationship between activism and protest and social movements and politics and government and passing laws and legislation? Um, you know, because part of my argument's been that you know, it's, it, it's a continuum. But what I also recognize is that sometimes government is so slow and can be so disappointing that I, uh, particularly young people who are feeling a sense of urgency about stuff, uh, maybe shy away from uh, channeling their activism in those ways. I, I thought that'd be an interesting thing to give us some perspective on. Well, thank you, Mr. President, very much. Um, I would like to start off, well, first of all, I'll tell you what I'm wearing and where I am. So I'm wearing a Mexican blouse. My husband's from Mexico and always brings me great clothing when he comes back. It's a bright, I uh, think, red, pink uh, blouse with flowers around the bodice. And behind me, uh, we're in our foyer. And so I have family pictures, lots of family pictures. Um, but I, I'd like, in responding to your question, to uh, let the audience know that it was a privilege to me when I worked for you, because uh, you, like President Clinton, really saw the importance of including disabled people in your administration. And I think when we're talking about um, the work that the Crip Camp uh, 2020 is um, discussing with people. For me, it's about inclusion, and it's about inclusion in the public and private sector. Um, it's about our stories, and it's about our belief that uh, we have faced injustice. I think for me, one of the big issues over the decades, I'm 72 and a half now, has been utilizing the word discrimination and being able to say, as a disabled person, that I have experienced discrimination. And one of the important parts about Camp Camp um, is very much that the stories that we were telling at Camp, Camp, Camp that we continue to tell uh, really have been, for me, an, an unharnessing, a releasing of the fact that we knew that we had great potential but society did not. It wasn't just and isn't just 
that society hasn't seen it, but they in many ways haven't let it happen. We have many wonderful laws. The United States has great laws. And I think, you know, under your administration, one of the things that was really happening was trying to work on effective implementation, which I think is critical. And because we have an international audience, I think there are some very unique aspects of what we have in the United States with our laws, um, specifically around technical assistance and enforcement and opportunities to uh, really bring people together to discuss discrimination and centers for independent living, parent training program. Those are all very important. But the ability to bring disabled people into positions in government, and I was at the State Department, and uh, our responsibility when I was there with Secretary Clinton and Kerry one of our main areas of work was on the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which um, you, Mr. President, signed when you were first in office. And we fought nobly to try to get the U.S. Senate to recommend ratification and unfortunately failed because we could not get enough Republicans to join us. I'm still mad about that. Well, I'm hoping that this year we'll have a new president named Biden and that one of the first issues we will work on is getting the CRPD ratified. Because everyone on this call from other countries is from a country that has ratified the treaty. And so our ability to work internationally, sharing information and learning from people is very important. When I started out in the movement, um, I have a book that just came out in February called Being Human. So I was laughing when you said what we have in common is being human. And that's, I think, really a lot of what um, the intent of my book is. It's telling my story. And what I really love is the number of people, young and old, with disabilities and without, who are talking about how my story is their story. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. We have much in common. The disability community, as Andrea has you know, beautifully articulated earlier on, we are the largest, most diverse community. And not only do we need to be learning about who we are at the disability community, bringing and expanding our circle of disabled people, because in the US we say we have 61 million disabled people and 1 billion disabled people around the world. Many people still not even knowing that they're protected by various laws, that if they believe they've been discriminated against, there is something they can do about it. But what I think is ultimately important here is when I was younger, I defined what we were working on as kind of being put into a candy store because there were so many areas that we were trying to affect that you could kind of pick the candy of your choice and then try to work on it. We learned very early on that it was one thing to be able to talk broadly about the types of discrimination we were experiencing, but then we needed also to be able to become specialists, um, some of us. We needed to learn how laws were made, how policies are developed, how they're implemented, how to work with our city government, our school board, um, our, our county board, our state board, how to work with the business community how to address the multiplicity of issues where we face discrimination in education. When we look at education for disabled children, even in the United States, while now our laws require that disabled children go to school, and you'll see many, many more disabled children in fully included educational settings. When we look at what's happening to poor black and brown children in the United States, we absolutely see the disparity. We see that families are not being given the support that they need, both to understand their rights under the law and to utilize those rights, and that we see higher dropout rates, more individuals who are winding up in juvenile facilities, and a major problem that organizations that are dealing with juvenile justice are not really addressing disability as a part of this problem. Um, if they understood disability as a part of this problem, then we would have more success. So that's one critical area. But 
what I believe is valuable about these group camp sessions is that people are speaking with each other. They're sharing information. We're learning more about a variety of issues. And the film itself is really having a very powerful impact. Now, one of the main things people say about the film is, why didn't we know this story? And I think there's a pretty simple but complicated answer. We need to know the story because media has not been covering disability appropriately. Uh, we're not included really in advertising, in children's books, on television programs, um, in documentaries, in regular movies, in, in just not only telling disability specific stories, but just having disabled people in the writer's room, you know, selling soda, whatever it may be. So. I think what's been wonderful about you and Mrs. Obama taking on Crip Camp is what I believe is your commitment to a broader issue, which is helping to ensure that disability is really being integrated into the civil rights movement. Um, you did, as much as you could, speak about disability as a part of your overall agenda. And we don't see that enough. And so I think our corporate heads, our, our human rights and civil rights nonprofit organizations need to look at, are we hiring disabled people? How is disability a meaningful part of the work that's going on? And people in your position, and this is Obama's position, really showing this as a critical issue to improving our society, to letting us um, be human, I think is really what this is about. So I want to thank um, the Higher Ground, Netflix, Andrea, the team, everyone watching, and recognizing that, as you were saying, we are in this for the long haul. Um, we are only going to be successful if we can continue to expand our movement. But as you see in the portion of the film around 504 and the ADA is one of the other reasons we were successful is we work with labor unions, religious leaders, uh, the LGBTQ community, on and on. We would never have been able to do, um, be successful in either getting 504 uh, regulations signed or the ADA signed or any of our other laws if it wasn't for coalition. So coalition cross disability, coalition cross civil rights and human rights organizations. And thank you for your ongoing leadership. It was a privilege for me to work for you. Thank you so much, Judy. We're so proud of you. Wow. Well, this is a dream <laughs> 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 to see you both on here together. Uh, it means so much to our community. Um, it just, it, it's amazing. And so I want to say thank you again, President Obama. Thank you, Judy. Love you. Always grateful. Ditto, ditto. And um, we're just grateful. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Love you all. Love you all. Bye bye. Bye. Well, <laughs> what an amazing conversation. We are, there's more. There's more. We're excited to continue this.